Hello everyone and welcome to another RC related review. Today we are going to take a look at the new MJX Box 2 uh, quadcopter. This is a newly released model uh, and uh, the main difference from uh, the Box 3 comes from the GPS. Uh, this quadcopter has a built-in GPS system so it will uh, have uh, things like automatic return to home uh, and position lock so it's very easy to fly and if something goes wrong like uh, let's say you can't see it in the sky or you don't know where it is it will return home and the same applies for fail safe such as low battery or low signal uh, it won't just tell you that but it will actually take measures by itself and come back to you so you will have more safety and avoid getting your quadcopter lost which is very nice of course it also has 2 way telemetry but i'm going to show you all the details in this review so this quadcopter uh, has this uh, size uh, it's the diagonal size between uh, the motors uh, 311 millimeters uh, it features a two-way radio that uh, it's specified to work for one kilometer and if you want to read this you can pause the video and see some of the things that this will do so <coughs> enough with talking about it let's take it out of the box and let's see what we get inside so we get a manual and some stickers and this is a quick start guide. Nice, the transmitter. The quadcopter is on the other side. So here there are some propellers. Okay. And here, just on. All right. And the quadcopter, of course. Let's take a quick look at the accessories. So it has a screwdriver, some flexible washers made from silicon, interesting. And this thing, uh, we'll see what this is, but I think I know already. I think this is a key to hold on to the motor uh, lock nuts here. So you can uh, use this to take them off in case if you can't do that with your bare hands so it also comes with a very simple balance charger and this one outputs only 0.5 amp so it's definitely going to be a slow charger and it comes also with a micro SD card and a micro SD card reader for the built-in camera and here is the quadcopter so I'm going to take this off so the camera is facing a bit down just like on other quadcopters and of course the battery and look at the battery it comes with a protection tab which is a piece of uh, adhesive paper so it uses X3 uh, 30 connector just like the box 3 and it also has a balance connector here look at that so this is not a smart lipo battery it's just a simple lipo battery in case in a plastic tray so that may be a good thing we'll see about that so the quadcopter itself has this sliding design with clips so you need to pay attention to this wire so it will not get trapped so it kind of stays here inside and you close the battery door so let's move further with uh, this uh, quadcopter uh, I find it very interesting to see that those uh, silicon washers that I have shown you here are actually installed here and if I'm going to take this uh, lock nut out and I'm going to take the propeller here is the 
silicone washer thing so you get a spare set of those so what uh, this actually is a, some kind of soft, soft mounting uh, propeller system on the motor uh, I don't know if that will eliminate some of the vibration or things like that but when the quadcopter is flying the propeller is uh, pulling upward and all that thrust power it will be on this thing which is going to be squished between the lock nut so the power of the propeller which takes the aircraft up it's not going directly to this lock nut which goes back to the motor shaft but it's dampened by this thing so it's very interesting I've, I have never seen this type of uh, propeller mounting system and another particularity on uh, this quadcopter is the fact that the motor housing and the motor shaft seems to be made out of plastic or at least covered with plastic because if you closely look inside it seems to have metal a metal shaft but it's covered in plastic and of course inside here you have magnets on the outer casing of the motor but it's covered in again plastic probably just for some uh, taking the weight off a bit I don't know uh, we'll see how this uh, design will cope another uh, particularity of uh, the propellers and uh, the fixation system is uh, that uh, the prop has here a notch and uh, it will not enter the shaft in any position but in just one position and it will lock into place on the shaft so you cannot rotate the propeller on uh, on the motor so it's secured for rotation and then you secure it with this thing so it's a very interesting design the propeller it's very secured if you can say that uh, what is also nice is uh, in case you have this type of propellers which are from uh, Hubson uh, not only that they will fit but they are uh, self-locking type propellers so you can just put the propeller on and that's it you won't need to use this uh, I'm going to test it also with this kind of propellers and if you take a close look at the propellers let me put them like that uh, they have the same pitch as you can see it's on it's the identical design and they have the same size so it's they should perform similar uh, I need to weight them but I think that using this type of propeller will be a bit better because this one with locking nut and with this uh, silicone washer probably weight a bit more than the simple propeller and this is also self-locking and I like the self-locking design more because definitely you are going to lose this while this will just screw on to the motor the reason I have shown you the Hubson propeller is because I'm also planning a comparison with the Hubson HE501 uh, quadcopter which as you can see it has the exactly same size exactly the same motor placement so it's identical in design as you can see they both has the same camera placement slightly pointing downward they are both brushless they use the same propellers so they should have a similar flight performance uh, what matters the most is uh, what they can do as uh, stock because this is the uh, SS version of the H501 and that comes with this large transmitter and it has built-in FPV but uh, this is retail for uh, 250 up to $300 while this is just only $110, $115 which is very cheap and remember they both are GPS quads they both have cameras 
so they use similar technology only that the box in this uh, version as you see here doesn't have FPV while this one has FPV so uh, that's the most of uh, differences between these two uh, the box clearly is a lot more cheaper for what it uh, offers so now let's move on further to the box 2 because this is a review about the box 2 and uh, I'm going to move on to the transmitter. The transmitter uses four AA batteries, which I have already installed. And uh, it has a rather simple design, but um, it's also a nice design because uh, all the buttons are clearly labeled and you can understand them even without reading the manual. So this is clear for turning off, off or on the GPS mode. This is the headless mode. Uh, you can take a pot off from here and of course this will be a video and this is for returning home uh, this is for uh, auto takeoff uh, or locking the motors uh, this is this one is for taking off and this is for locking the motors or unlocking them so you can see very simple and I'm going to install the propeller here and I'm going to insert the battery uh, I advise you to take off the propellers if you plan to test it indoor not put the propellers on like I do so you should definitely avoid that I'm going to turn on the transmitter first um, it's uh, possible that when you receive with this quadcopter that the transmitter is not pinned it to the quadcopter and to bend it, it's very simple to do that. You need to hold the red button down, turn it on, the light will flash, the green light will flash, and now I'm going to insert the battery. And I have steady green light here, which means that the quadcopter is now bonded to the transmitter, and you get telemetry here. Uh, this is for height and this is from distance. Distance is calculated from the takeoff point, while the height is sent from the quadcopter. This uh, quadcopter has uh, the need for calibrating the accelerometer and the compass and that is, it's uh, very well explained in the manual. Uh, I'm also going to cover that in the second part of uh, this review because this is going to get too long if I uh, explain you that and calibration for the compass must be done outside not indoor so I'm going to skip that for now so as you can see here it turns on the GPS mode or disable GPS mode uh, and you have motor unlock lock so all those things work and of course you get telemetry also for the battery RX here means the quadcopter battery as you can see it's not fully charged and if I hold it in that place you can see the rest of the icons which are a return to home, headless, video mode and camera mode. So this will take a snapshot but I don't have the SD card inserted and if I keep it pressed it will record video if I have an SD card inside. Now going a bit uh, back to the battery uh, this is a two cell LiPo and it has uh, 1800 milliamps and uh, a 25C discharge rating uh, as you can see it's small and here is the Hubson battery uh, this one has uh, 2700 milliamps but only 10C discharge so discharge is rather low but it has a lot more capacity and if I try to insert the Hubson battery here it not only fits but this thing has a lot more space inside as you can see you can definitely fit a larger battery inside and uh, use a small XT30 connector to connect the battery or you can even take the cap of this battery out and still use it so you can insert your own battery with an XT30 connector and close the cap back nicely so this quadcopter really has the potential upgrading the battery 
with a larger one without any kind of major modifications like cutting its battery door or bay or something like that or strapping batteries uh, on its airframe so it just takes bigger batteries without other issues so this was the first part of uh, the review for the box to quadcopter this is uh, kind of uh, an introduction because uh, i'm going to test flight it and uh, get some uh, real conclusions from there to see some uh, flight characteristics uh, the battery um, runtime the camera footage how it com uh, it's uh, controllable in air so those are uh, more important than seeing this uh, first part uh, that will come soon also and uh, of course there will be a comparison with the uh, Hubsons this is the SS version the HG501 and this is the X4 uh, uh, Air model uh, this one uh, it's an updated version it has a Wi-Fi control so you can connect with the smartphone to it uh, the comparison will be uh, with both of them and not only by the flight characteristics and uh, footage but also from the price and the futures point of view which will be very interesting because this one is currently the cheapest uh, GPS quadcopter with brushless motors and that comes also with a camera it has 2A telemetry so it's really advanced for uh, its price the price is amazingly cheap for what it offers as stock and it seems to have upgrade pot potential inside so we'll see all of those uh, soon until then bye bye